Yes, hello everyone. Yeah, and today I will show you how you can integrate um, Momo Pay, MTN Momo Pay into your uh, project or e commerce project. So, uh, first thing you want to do is to go to uh, this MTN developer portal and then you want to come here under the products. Obviously, you need to have an account. Then you have to go under products. Then uh, you subscribe to any of the products. So under products, you find a correction widget. You find disbursements. You can also find remittance. So it's all about what you want to do. So for the correction widget, it's uh, basically a way of receiving mobile payments on your website uh, through a USSD. Uh, and then disbursements, you are depositing funds to users. So uh, after after subscribing to any of the products, you will just you will get this. So you can show the key here. You can yeah, just like that. I can show you this because I will change this. So yeah, this is the primary key and this is the secondary key. So when you have those keys, now what you want to do uh, before we head to the code um, you, you maybe need to first test this in uh, Postman I don't know if you are familiar with Postman but uh, that's the better way to, to first test your uh, to see if everything works so these are the endpoints I will drop these ones down if you need them but if you still don't want this you can just use the documentation uh, uh, to get the endpoints so uh, this is just a variable as you can see when I hover over it it's uh, sandbox.momo.developer.mtn.com uh, uh, basically this is for testing uh, that's why we have the sandbox but if you are to move into production then obviously it will just be from momodevdeveloper.mtn.com uh, without the sandbox so yeah so what you want to do whether you are using correction or disbursements uh, the steps are almost the same uh, so after importing this collection here the momopay open api uh, you want to come here to environments and add uh, these keys, uh, these subscription keys. These ones are coming from your uh, developer portal. So by default, um, Postman will take them when you uh, when you when you're testing an endpoint. But when it comes to code. Obviously, we shall not be using the postman. We shall be passing our um, uh, our keys, our primary or subscription keys uh, via the headers. So when we uh, first thing you want to do is to send and see if you're getting a token. So you can see here you can get an access token. So once you have the authorization token, then that's when you can do all other stuff like transferring the money, or maybe same thing with correction here. So uh, first thing you want to do is to get an, an authorization token. Then you can go on to request to pay. So let's head on to the code and uh, maybe I show you what uh, I wanted to show you today. So as you can see, I just have a simple form right here, a billing address form. Uh, it's just uh, common things. And here, where I want to pay with mobile money, I'm just getting a mobile phone number of the user. So, uh, so after getting the mobile phone number, then uh, on submitting the form, this is where I'm calling my function from, the handle order function. So, so basically, this is uh, where it all is. So. I just want you to understand this function here and you'll be set to go. Uh, this is just um, a simple React uh, using states and all that stuff for storing your set values. Yeah, 
I'm just importing Axios, uh, which will be helping me to to send HTTP requests. And uh, yeah, and this is just React Redux, which is uh, of course uh, a React way of storing uh, items in the storage. So uh, first. Uh, this is just a simple testing to make sure that people, someone has provided a name, the address, and the city and the phone. So, like I said, the first thing you want to do is to request for the URL. So, you need to get a URL, the token. Uh, sorry, you need to get a token. So, we have here a uh, token URL, and then we are using this URL as you see here. So, uh, like I said, in development, you just get rid of this. But for testing, we shall use the sandbox. So, uh, then we are making an Axios call. So, it's a post request. So, we are taking in our token URL. And then in the headers, uh, we, are set, we are set a content type to JSON. And we set a reference ID. Uh, this can just be this or anything then we have our subscription key which is being passed here so uh okay it's advisable you create like a, a, a dot env file and then you store all that stuff there and then you just uh put here the the, 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 the path to the dot env so uh, but here since it is just a tutorial we just do it this way i will just paste here the subscription key then i will listen for the token and see if i'll get a token yeah like i said you can use this uh in any of your languages if you're using plain javascript like vanilla javascript you're just uh, getting the url making an axios call and then or you can use fetch whatever is okay for you and then uh, you're getting the token so we'll uh just be sure i'm just uh, uh logging the the result of what i'm getting so once i have the token remember here i'm in, um, I'm, uh, I'm 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 in that dot then so i have this dot then and then the catch so that means i've not gotten the token but if i have that the token now that's when i can request to pay so now i have this other url the sandbox.mtn.correction version one zero request to pay so this is the url that i'm passing here now this uh this is what you're supposed to provide now for me here i'm providing the total plus the shipping fee that i want to correct from the user the currency is uh, always in EAR, so that means you have to find a way of converting your currency to the, the currency you get from the user, then you convert it to EAR. Uh, then the internal ID can be anything like I told you, one, two, two, nine. Then uh, the pair, we have the party ID type, which is MCISDN. Then the party ID, this is the phone number. So I'm just using two five six and then passing in the phone number of the user and then a message and a, a note so um now there you make like that you request to make a payment so if everything is successful now you will receive you will get a response if everything is successful now at this point we want to see if we are getting a response. So after getting the response, uh, so for us to get a response, now we do a get uh, a get request. So uh, now this is the URL that you will do. Now in your response here, you will get a payment ID, which is what we are passing here, because that ID will be specific for a certain user. Now. After getting that ID, I uh, will do a GET request uh, using this URL. And then, now at this point, we can say that payment is done. So the, the payment is done. So from here, um, from here, I'm just making a, 
an order. I'm storing the order. So I'm using, uh, for my project, I'm using uh, MongoDB uh, to press the, to store the order in the database. So uh, from this step up to up, you're done with the payment. So when you're done with the payment, that's when we can make the order. That's when we can store the order and we know this person has paid and then, yeah, so we can make the order. So this, uh, this, uh, this path is just adding to my API uh, just to store the order. So I have the cut items, the billing address, and the shipping fee. Uh, so I'm, I'm also supposed to attach the ID of the user, which is got from um, after paying, just to have it in my database to be sure that this is the person who paid. Yeah, so if everything is successful and you can say order press successful, yeah, these are just catch. You're catching the errors for uh, whatever problem that may arise. So basically, that's it, how you can do it. Uh, if you have any other questions, you can let me know. But that's it. Thank you. I will just drop the uh, this down if you need them. Yeah. But enjoy. This is basically that's how you can do it um, to integrate Momo Pay in your. Uh, but one thing you have to know is that um, for collection, uh, you may not get a token uh, because it was revoked, but it works. So, but if you test with disbursement, then you will see the magic. But uh, with corrections, I think MTN kind of uh, remove the testing. Like, uh, but when you're ready to push it to development and you change everything, it will work fine. So my one thing I would just say is that maybe you can have your app hosted and then, yeah, uh, when you're ready, just integrate to the uh, production case and uh, URLs, and then you see everything working fine. Yeah, thanks. Uh, let me know if you have any queries.